Hello amateurs and welcome to another episode of Hot Topics and I've got Sean Phelan here from Fill Your Boots. Sean, how are you? I'm good mate, how are you? Very well. And today we're going to be looking at the community rugby finals that were played at Twickenham over the last two weekends. And Sean, you were there. So just give us an idea of like the atmosphere. What was the feeling like within the grounds? Uh, do you know what? It was great. You know, there was, <clears throat> I was there for one of the, one of the days of finals on, uh, sorry, there's a uh, truck about to go past me. Um, yeah, I was there for the beautiful sounds of an industrial estate at midday. Um, yeah, so there, yeah, there was the four finals, um, uh, eight teams. Uh, actually, no, there were seven teams because Cheltenham played, ended up playing, uh, played twice. Their seconds played in one of the finals, and then their first team played against Leicester Tigers in the championship playoff, um, back to back. So that was great. So that yeah, the crowds were noisy. It was great. It was a great day to be part of. Um, yeah, it was from from sort of the outside looking in. It looked like everyone was having a great time. Big crowds, lots of buses being brought in. Not enough bars that took them open because the the queue was was around the block. Uh, but all in all, yeah, I think I think people were enjoying themselves. Great stuff. And this is, of course, off the backdrop of what has been kind of minimal participation in the competition as a whole. And I spoke to Dick and Moon about that recently, and I'll I'll link that video up here somewhere uh so that you can go and go and read see that one if you want but i'm assuming the people that were there on the day they didn't care a jot that they only had to pay a handful of games to get to twickenham was that the case yeah i think so i think so uh, a cup final or a big venue because it wasn't just twickenham there was uh six ways was being used the stone x of saracens was being used Darlington Arena was being used. I think King's Home was even being used. So there was, you know, plenty of finals going up and down the country. Uh, plenty of tra- clubs doing a lot of travelling. Um, no, I don't think anyone really cared that, you know, how they got there. It's just that they get that experience to, to do that. Yeah, great for them. Great for their clubs. What a memory to have. Yeah, t- talk to me a bit more about the memory for the clubs and the value that it has for a rugby club to go to Twickenham and play a final. Well, I guess for a lot of people, it's what dr- the dreams are made of, isn't it? It's you know, it's, especially Twickenham to to go and play there would be an absolute dream. I've never done it. I'd love to. Um, I, yeah, to to take your club there and to be with your mates, be with your, all the friends, probably people you've grown up with as well, to take the pitch. At the home of rugby, whether you win or lose, you've won. You, you, everyone's everyone's won. So, I think, yeah, I think it's a, it's what a, what a, what an occasion to be part of. So, you know, to tra- train in, the, uh, to get changed in the dressing rooms, to walk down the tunnel, to the you know to the big fanfare, to you know, your friends and family in the crowd. At, you know, it's absolutely wonderful. What a, what a, an opportunity. Yeah, I completely agree. And as you know, I've I've been round to quite a few clubs over the last few years, and the clubs that have made it to Twickenham, that photo is the pride of place yeah, in their absolutely. clubhouse. Every single club, so it lives it's forever, a huge doesn't thing. It? it lives forever. Um, you know, small clubs don't necessarily get the opportunity to become immortal, but you'll always be immortal in that clubhouse now because because of the, uh, because of what you, you you achieved and yeah, brilliant. Brilliant. What well, yeah? You know, what memories to create? What memories to to keep forever? And it looked like there was some cracking rugby played as well. Oh, I've brilliant. seen some of the Absolutely highlights brilliant. going around. Absolute four. There was some, four some of the, the highlights for you, Sean. In a long time. It's true. Um. So off the back of that, do you think there's potential that more teams will see what's happened this year and then be more likely to participate next year? Yeah, I think the RFU said that they had 500 applications to join the, t- the different tournaments. Um, I don't know how many actually took part. Um, but you'd like to think, now that they've got the first first season of this out of the way, that more people will go, wow, yeah, you know, what an opportunity. Three or four games and you get to play in a final. So I think, I just, hopefully, they will use it as an advertisement you know, an advert, uh, a, a carrot at the end of a very long season. Um, 
Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I hope more people get involved next year. Um, it'd be it'd be great to have more clubs up and down the country getting that opportunity to go and play. You know, one last game of the season in a big in a big arena, whether it's Twickenham or Darlington or or, or the Stone X or wherever, it doesn't matter. The, the occasion is still the occasion. It'd be you know, it'd be great, and I think now more for more. It needs to come from the people that have played in it. Those stories of you know the day, the um, the weeks leading up to it, the the bus journeys and stuff. Those stories need to be told, so then more people will go. Oh yeah, wouldn't it be great to have that? So yeah, hopefully, hopefully it will galvanise people to to take part in it next year. But it's at the end of a. You know, you, I, I heard your pod with Dick and Moon. It was you know, it wasn't. I don't think it was the most easiest of competitions to be part of uh lots of traveling lots of last minute changes um so yeah so you know i think but those stories need yeah things can be rectified and things can be planned a bit better but overall to be three or four games away from twickenham you know why wouldn't you want to do it yeah, and I said in that pod with Dickon that I just want rugby to be available for anybody that wants to play it. And, you know, judging by my timeline of, you know, there was just so much joy flying around Twickenham and the other stadiums last weekend. So hopefully that will inspire some other people. I hope so. I do. I really hope so. The game needs it. The, okay. The, especially the community game. The community games needs that bit of galvanisation. Yeah, there's a lot of changes, a lot of crap stuff happening. So, you know, why not? You know, let's use the assets that we've got to 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 show off the great bits of of the community game. Why not? Yeah, I agree. And lastly, uh, the community cup finals are sponsored by Papa John's. So I'm just wondering how much pizza you ate on the day. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. So. Uh, I had the comment. So uh, Rachel Burford was on commentary. She was over. She was at the other side of the gantry, other side of the stadium to me. And I had her in my ear while I was watching um, the games and and doing everything that was doing for 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 Philly Boots. And her and her fellow commentator commented on the lack of pizza. So there was there was generally nothing. There was nothing. Not even a stall open. Uh, so yeah, I did have to buy my own when I got home. I was, I was, I was almost tempted to just get a Domino's just to you know stick two fingers up, but uh, there was none available anywhere. Uh, so no, there was no Papa John's pizza eaten. Uh, I had that uh, Papa John's trophy. They, they sponsor the League One, the League Two um, football trophy, and I went to a game with being told that there was going to be plenty of pizza and there was absolutely none of it as there as well. So I think, I think they need to think this one through a bit more. Yeah. I mean, it seems like such an easy win, doesn't it? Just to put you some would, of your product. You would, you would think so. You would think so. so there was, there was a few <laughs> thousand people there. They could have sold quite a few, I'm sure. Yeah. So we're going to finish up now, Sean. Is there anything else you want to say aside from the pizza about the community finals? No, 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 no. That's you no. Know, that, it, it was. I, I still got my pizza, and uh, it was great. Uh, you know, it was a wonderful day, wonderful weekend of oh, two, two weekends of finals. Um, some fantastic rugby being played. Some incredible tries being scored. There was one uh, April Callahan for Dings Crusaders, which, if you haven't seen it, it's as good as. Chris Ashton scoring against Australia 15 years ago. It was absolutely incredible. Um, so go, yeah, go and find that. Um, there's some interviews for that I did in the tunnel with some of the winners uh, over on my Instagram and TikTok. So go and check them out. But yeah, it was, and, and every, you could see the excitement on everybody's face. So that, that, that would be forever part of sort of uh, their rugby lives which is amazing. Yeah, and that's on FYB Rugby, Sean. Is that right? Sorry? Yeah, uh, at FYB Rugby. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'll make sure I'll link that down below for everybody. Go and check out FYB Rugby and everything that Sean's doing there. But for people 
watching or listening, uh, what do you think? Were you there at the finals day? I'd love to hear your stories. Do you think uh, if you weren't there, you might be more likely to participate next year? Uh, again, let, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, and it would be great if you could give this video a little thumbs up and maybe a subscribe if you haven't already. So it just needs me to say, Sean, thanks very much for your time today. No worries. Absolute pleasure, Tim. Look after yourself. See you soon.